And I'm just going to start with some evergreens, a pine or a spruce. And I'm going to start by just painting the trunk. And pretty much that's always the best thing to do if you're painting trees is paint the trunk. And then I work out from the trunk. And I don't want to paint every branch. Evergreens are very spiky. And I'm just quickly roughing in my evergreen shape. I kind of like that so far. It's very pale though. And I'm starting with a warm color because what I'm going to do is kind of a warm yellowy green. And then what I'm going to do is just add some cooler tones into this wet mixture and let those colors mingle. Generally trees are darker at the trunk, which just makes sense. There'd be more shadows there. And if you have watched my evergreen tree video, you can know there's lots of color combinations you can do. Here I've just quickly painted, this one is green gold, a little bit of quinacridone gold and sap green, but you could also be brave and daring and uh, paint an evergreen tree. That's a bendy trunk. Using, this is a cobalt teal actually with some sap green in it. And a little bit of cerulean blue. And, oh, I kind of like that shape too. Really enjoying in making interesting brush strokes. And then what you could do with your tree that you've painted using teal is get grab some brilliant, um, what is that red? Perylene Scarlet, I believe. And I'm dropping that in. And it just seems crazy, I know. And if you have seen my other video, you'll know that I did this in my other vibrant tree, vibrant evergreen tree video. And now I'm going back in, adding a little indigo. And all of those interesting colors are going to mix. The reason I use the scarlet is because red is a complement to green. And so red actually makes green look greener. And the two, red and green, will mix together and make a neutral. And I love using interesting color combinations to make my paintings more interesting. And trees, I love painting trees. They're unpredictable. So if you do get a little bit crazy with your colors or your shapes of your trees and you have one cockeyed branch you know coming out that's okay because you know trees the, my trees that I paint aren't pruned and so here I have two different trees and two different colors depending on um, the time of day you're painting the type of landscape you're painting you might want to use either one of these two color families so there are just some very simple evergreen trees and let's move on to painting a deciduous tree. Okay, so let's paint deciduous trees now. And I'm going to start with some light green. This is going to be um, summertime or spring. There are this paler green more in the spring. This is green gold, a little bit of cobalt teal. Ooh, I like that. And we're just going to paint a clump of birch trees. And when you're painting leaves, you generally want to paint your sky first because you don't want to have to paint around those leaves later. Or the other thing you can do and I learned this from a German watercolor artist, is you can paint your sky and your leaves kind of at the same time and just let them kind of bleed together a little bit. And it's a very scary thing to do because if you're painting your, your leaves and your sky at the same time, aren't they going to bleed together and cause you to have a green sky? Yeah, it's just possibly. It's also a lot of fun. 
and give it a try. So that's what I was, just what I'm going to demonstrate to you here. And I keep things fairly light because we're going to go over it and add darker color later. So suddenly I'm getting a very quick sky. And we'll say our horizon's right here. And this is just going to be one, one clump of trees. Okay, so my basic spring tree here has start, has dried. My first wash of, has started to dry. And so now I can go in and add my trunks. And I'm going to use a gray, which in this case is mixed by mixing cobalt blue and a little burnt umber. I'm just going to paint myself some trunks. And you can go up into the holes that you've left and add further detail. I'm just going to start defining. I'm going to want to do more green there. Didn't really finish it the way I would like. But my first wash just gives me a chance to kind of define where my trees are. And then I can go in further and grab a little purple on my brush actually and then add some shadow and it's nice to use a brush with a nice point so you can really go in get some fine lines painted. And if this were a landscape, full landscape painting, I'd probably pull some shadows down from my trunks, just like so. And of course they'd be on this side, because this is the darker side of my trunks. And then I could go in and so often I want portions of my landscape to blend together so I work on multiple pieces at once as you can see And then I can go back to where I was working with my leaves while I'm waiting for my trunk to dry. And I can add more definition. Now I said earlier trees generally are darker toward, towards the trunks, towards the middle of the tree. There's going to be more shadow there. So you're going to want to, you can go in the darker color. This is actually the same green I used in the grass. And don't be afraid of painting it quite dark and then using a clean damp brush to move that color around a little bit. Drop in additional colors. My trunks are still damp so if I go over like this I can actually have a few more spots of leaves in front or behind my tree trunk. Then your second and third layers you're going to want to add leave some crisp edges inside your tree as well. You don't blend everything out with water to make a soft edge. Be aware that if you're painting spring trees, you want to keep them quite, the leaf color is quite light. The more layers you add, the darker they'll be, so you want to stop sooner than later. And even though some of my tree did blend into the sky, now is the time when I can go in and kind of define the edge of my tree.
just by making some little leaf shapes. We're not painting individual leaves, we're just painting the shapes of our tree, trying to see the tree as a whole instead of individual elements and leaves. A little bit of that darker green again towards the middle. And I'm pretty happy with that. Depending on how close your trees are to the view to the viewer in your picture plane, you, you'll have to make decisions about how much um, detail you want to add. And so I'm just going to mix up a little bit of more of my gray, my ultramarine blue, and my burnt umber. And then you can decide, do you want to have some dark silhouetted branches? Of course, because things are still damp here, I'm not waiting the way I could. It wants to bleed. And then what I could also do is if I wanted my trees to be even more defined is I'm going to demonstrate some techniques for painting detail on your tree trunks in a separate demo here in just a moment. Just a few more branches. And I'm pretty happy with that grove of trees. It's simple. It... Uh, fits with the rest of the landscape. I really like this stuff that I have going on here where the grass is actually bleeding up into the tree trunks. It really gives that feeling of it being anchored in the landscape and uh, that's important to a landscape. So often when I'm painting a landscape the elements all seem detached from each other and, and there's a bit of a thinking that goes on in trying to make everything fit together in a landscape painting. And having the colors blend like this is one of those ways. So there's a demonstration for just a quick simple grove of trees. These are birch or aspen trees and uh, try it out and see how it goes for you. I just wanted to go back and show you this simple landscape painting where I was working on birch trees and um, what I like about this one that's a little different from the demonstration I just showed you is that my my tree trunks here have a little more detail and definition. They have a little bit of an older look just because of that. And all that I've really done is I've gone in once my washes were dry with a dark color. I think I used Payne's Gray. And just painted in those little scars and branches that you would see if you were looking a little close, more closely at, at your birch trees just those little dark dabs of color. Some I actually will take clear water and, and bleed them out. Um, let them blend a little bit over here for example and it just gives my tree a little bit of an older look and a little more detail. It does draw the eye just a little bit more to that focal part of your painting. So again that's uh, what you would want to do next is, is go in and add those little bits of detail.